Welcome to the LMG Presents Marvel Multiverse RPG. Uh, this is the Marvel Multiverse RPG game that uh, we are playing. And if this is your first time tuning in, we thank you. Um, and if you listened to our last adventure, the murder world that time forgot, uh, we appreciate you listening to that. But today we have a brand new adventure. Um, and I'm excited about this one. Of course, uh, I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jordan and I am the narrator. So I will be the one taking us through this adventure. Um, but today we are joined by some, a familiar cast, but new characters. So I am going to start to my left, basically. And I have David. David, who are you playing as? So this round I'm playing as J.J. Jones, the best Triple J around. Uh, not to be confused with uh, J. Jonah Jameson, but um, <laughs> he goes by the codename Blackjack. He's born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, the French Quarter. He uh, has a, always had a knack for playing with cards and using sleight of hand. So he's been entertaining tourists and kind of got a little local celebrity with him. Um, and then one day he got hit by some tearing gas and triggered some inhuman genes that were secretly there the entire time, almost like uh, Miss Marvel. He has a wide range of abilities, and since he first was exposed to it, it kind of went chaotic for a minute, but now he's got it down to using his deck of cards and a six-sided die. Whenever he draws a card, he gets a random ability, and he's been practicing his whole life for it, so he's got most of these down, although sometimes they come with consequences. And next to David, we have Ethan playing as? Uh, I will be playing uh, Jake Carson. Uh, also known as Stormshade. He was a uh, rancher in the Colorado Rockies when he fell into a abandoned mine shaft on a cattle drive. Um, he was left there by the people he was with, presumed dead. Um, he heard a call from inside the mine. And as he went deeper into it, he came upon uh, the Tempest Blade, which spoke to him. Um, once he accepted the blades contract, he was bestowed, uh, powers of teleportation, um, some elemental control. Um, and he has been, the blade guides him to fight against wrongdoing. Um, sometimes it may go a little far, but for the most part, he's here to do good. And last but not least, we have Josh playing as. Oh, look at Josh on mute. Dang. All right. I'm <laughs> playing as Kale Arden, uh, born and raised in Genosha. Um, and uh, my his, par his powers uh, manifested when his family was attacked during an anti-mutant raid. Uh, so he's been learning to control his powers um, and is actually at this point made of, of this element or an elemental energy that his power is based on, but does have the ability to shape shift and appear human uh, when he needs to or wants to. Nice. So there you have it. You have the cast, you have the characters, last but not least, you have the story. So, we will go ahead and drop right into it. So we'll I'll give a little backstory to kind of where we are and how these characters kind of know each other. Um, all you guys are basically shield. You're you're in training in shield. So you've been you've been around the shield um, for a few months now. You've been training with them. You're not official shield members yet. You guys have yet to be, go. You know, get the trust and. Uh, go through the whole initiation process, but you guys are in training. Uh, you guys have not had your first mission yet. Um, so this is uh, this is where we'll kind of start at. And as you guys are basically in the training room training, um, you get a call from Maria Hill, and she wants everyone to basically come to the, uh, what's called like the, like the, the headquarters, basically. So come into like the meeting room and you guys all come to the meeting room and this is she sits down with everybody. You guys are surrounded, uh, you know, it's chairs surrounding like a big television and everything. Uh, the, the television is off right now. The screen is off. But Maria comes around 
And she she starts asking for the rundown. She already has the, the dossier on like who you guys are. But in order to be shield members, she needs to know what your powers are. So she walks over to Blackjack, throws his file on the table, and she says, I see your powers are listed here. Tell me a little more about your powers. <laughs> That's confidential information. But since you are the queen of confidential, I don't see why not. Essentially, I'm going to draw one of these cards here. Any card. In fact, you can pick one if you want. And then all of a sudden, I get at one random amazing power or some bull, depending on uh, how Lady Luck is doing today. On the bright side, I can shapeshift, throw lightning at you. Um, if I'm super lucky, I might be able to take your own power from you and use it against you. Otherwise, you can catch me levitating, using a little Earth style. You've seen the Avatar. Shoot, who has it? <laughs> <laughs> outside of that see this magic die that's attached around my neck in order to use my powers I gotta throw it out once I draw one of these cards and we'll see how long that lasts but I can promise you this whoever I'm facing no luck won't last as long as they think they will Maria kind of looks at you and she just kind of scoffs uh, I've seen your type before she goes to the next person she throws a dossier Am I saying that right? Dossier, 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 dossier. dossier. Yeah, these big, these big words. Get you. It's uh, French. So she, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she throws the dossier right in front of Stormshade and says, "Tell me more about your powers." Uh, okay. So Stormshade would be kind of typical cowboy western, like leaning back in the chair, maybe even have his boots up on the table. Uh, cowboy hat, bandana, even a poncho of some short, you know, around, um, very laissez-faire about the whole thing. Um, when Maria Hill asks, he would quickly vanish into a mixture of shadows and like sparks of electricity and appear in another chair on the other side of the room and quickly just pop in and out into multiple chairs um, kind of tip his hat and says, does that answer your question, little lady? She quickly responds and says, get your damn boots off my table and sit down. This is not a playground. Maria walks to the next person. Blazer, huh? Tell me a little bit more about your powers. So my powers, uh, I'm I'm consumed by and can control some elemental energy and I start flickering between or shape shifting between my human form and pure energy form. She, she quickly says, I hope you're going to be able to contain all that energy. You've been doing a lot of training. I hope you can really control it. As the conversation is going on, uh, Maria stops and she, she says, will you guys please turn your attention towards the TV and Everyone stops and looks at the TV and they see a man dressed in a really nice suit. He, for a second, you guys think it's Agent Nick Fury. And then you guys quickly get a little bit better look at him and you notice that, you know, both eyes are there. Um, <laughs> he He's not as, he's not, he's not bald or anything like Agent, like Nick Fury is. He's actually younger, younger look than Nick Fury. And and you guys are like, hey, who is that? And then he introduces himself as Agent Jay Fury. He tells you right now that you guys have secretly been training for underneath him this whole entire time. He tells you there have been a lot of different Avengers team. And he, he quickly says, like, you guys might know my cousin, Nick Fury. Well, I'm the little cousin. And I don't get that much attention as he does, but I'm working on it. I'm building a team right now. And I want you three to be a part of it. There's the West Coast Avengers. You know, they're based out of the West Coast. There's the Savage Avengers. It's one of the most deadliest Avengers team we've had. Hell, we even got the A-Force. That is the team with all the women. And he says, I need a different team here. I have an inhuman, we have a mutant, and we have a magical person with a, some, some strange affliction towards this sword. I believe you three will be my greatest weapon yet. 
unfortunately I can't be here in front of you right now. I'm kind of dealing with some, a situation that that's come up on our radar out in Australia, not Australia, but out in um, Antarctica. And I have a feeling that arcade might be behind it, but I will leave that guy. I will leave that to a later time to talk about for now. I need you guys to go to uh little Italy, little Italy. We, there's some things going on there. Um, I have a connection with someone and it sounds like something's going on and I don't have time to send out my big, my big group. So I'm going to send you three. I want you guys to make me proud here. And so with that, everyone goes and they load into the blackbird and they just, you know, take off to little Italy. So if you guys will take your characters and you guys can kind of load them on to, uh, to the map, you guys can load them over here. So you guys quickly go to, uh, this place called little Italy. And it is basically, I mean, really what it sounds like. Um, <laughs> a little version of Italy. Um, but there's your guys on Mulberry Street and you're just surrounded by buildings right now. It kind of looks like some, like there's not a lot of foot traffic going on. And Agent J basically comes on the uh, on the intercoms throughout the Black, almost at the Blackbird, throughout the Quinjet. And he tells you, I need to go visit uh, Nani's. We got some reports of things going on over there and I need you guys to go check it out. So, this is where we'll start. We are now on Mulberry Street, and you guys can, you guys are free to basically move around wherever you want to. Um, but your main objectives right now is to make it to Nani's, but feel free to kind of move around anywhere. Um, we can go ahead. Let's, uh, let's get some turn order. I'll add a turn order so we can kind of see what everyone wants to do. Can I ask a quick question to the team while you get that set up? Yep. Um, since we've been training together, um, I would know if they would have like any sort of special movement. Like I can teleport, like we've had people that could fly, jumping, super speed, that kind of stuff. Do, does anybody have like movement stuff they can do? Like just on command, mm. just as general information that we would know as a team. On command, no, but I'll pretty much, you guys pretty much know what suit I draw. So if I'll say diamonds or spades or clubs, you'll know what range of power that I'm using at that point in time. So as far as movement goes, if I end up drawing the king of diamonds, yes, I have the ability to levitate and make people levitate. Can't make them fly, but I can get them off the ground. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I, I don't have any special movements. Okay, cool. It's fine with me. Just learning my team here. Um, then roll initiative. Yep. And you guys can go ahead and roll for initiative and we just kind of get the going. I remember all my new powers and stuff here. Uh who are we missing? We're missing Storm Shade. No, wait, no, no. Oh, we got I'm on there. Shade. I'm 14. Uh, it, did Josh? Oh, did you click blazer. your token before doing it? Oh yeah, nope, I didn't. I thought um, Jordan should be able to right click your token, and on the top it should say, "Yeah, I got like, you. Add turn, and oh, now you can it. just yeah, I got edit it. it in there. Okay, cool, nice. All right, so now we have the turn order, and looks like who's that? Stormtrae. I'm still, I still got to learn. You know, still learn everybody character. That would be Blazer up first. Yeah, looks like oh, I'm first. Blazer. All right. Blazer, where do you want to go? All right. So I've got, looks like my run speed is six. So I'm going to head down the street. Um, let's see. You might have to Thanks. use the directional arrows to get going. Those were kind of bigger than the map. Yeah, I'm trying to. Is there anything I had to do to to use the arrows? I can drag it. Oh, uh, you might just be able to drag it. Um, yeah, the arrows aren't aren't working. Oh, Did you disable say, the grid? Oh, I think so. Okay, 
So the arrows aren't going to work without the grid, but we can just kind of use the measurement tool and measure out like how many squares it should tell you like six squares, which would be your movement speed. Yeah, and then sure. just like pick him up and move him to that spot. And then also, you can ah, you can also double your movement speed right here too if you don't take like a standard action or anything. Okay, yeah, well, you I'll... can use your action to move again. So I'm gonna run to. I'm gonna head down to this. Uh, I think it's alley. So I'm gonna run. Come on, pick my guy. There we go. I'm gonna run down and. Take a look down this alley. Okay. And with that, do you want to do any action or anything? Um, I guess action wise, that's, I want to like just see what's down. Basically, like, yeah, look look down the alley and see what's what's going on here. Before I, like, can I keep running after that or? Yeah, I mean, you you could you can stop and take a look. You can use your vigilance to see if you can spot anything, or you can. Uh, do a double movement speed and keep going. Yeah, I want to use my vigilance and see if I can spot anything down the alley. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll for a vigilance check. Looks like I've got a nine. Uh, that is not enough. So, you take a look down the alleyway and kind of don't see anything i mean you see some trash cans and you know some mice running around and that's about all you see right now uh blackjack you're up i'm gonna go ahead and after i watched is it blazer's a storm shade blazer, blazer went first blazer i'm went still first. standing next to you gotcha after seeing Blazer go first, I'm going to go ahead and draw. So a, my eyes turn a bright blue and a magical deck appears in front of me and I draw a card. Looks like I drew fl the One of Diamonds, a.k.a. Flexible Bones. For those of you that know what a Flexible Bones are, essentially I am uh, Mr. Fantastic, but not to that extreme. I can stretch a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not... you can keep going. Now that I got flexible bones, flexible bones activated. I'm going to go ahead and just move five steps, kind of backing my buddy up. All right, and last but not least, uh, storm shape. Um. Okay. So I see both of them. Just kind of take off down the road. I am going to... Um, so I have a... Like a bandana hanging around my neck. Very typical cowboy. Whenever I pull that up over my face, it turns into... Like more of a modern day like superhero mask. You know, protecting secret identity stuff. Uh, once I pull that up, I'm going to... Uh, a poof into thin air. And I would like to show back up uh, on the roof next to this alley over here. I can go. Let me double check my distance here. Uh, Ten times my rank and outside of combat, I can go up to a hundred times my rank. Um, so ten times. So I can go 30 squares and I don't need that many for the first one. But I do want to teleport to the top of this building here. Um I am also, uh, I have a trait called Sneaky. Um, it makes me harder to detect. And uh, a character has an edge on agility checks when sneaking. And enemies have trouble on vigilance checks to detect me if I'm either invisible or hiding. So I want to be as stealthy as I can, teleport to the roof, and kind of peer down into the same alleyway that Blazer and blackjack have been kind of going to it's the first access point toward where we need to go um so i just want to get a bird's eye view of what we're looking at here okay uh do you want to do any vigilance checks or anything yeah I, i'd love to do vigilance checks see if i can see anything in particular okay so let's hit that 
uh, 12. And that is enough to see what's going on. As you're looking out, you can kind of see um, the store, the store that Jay Fury told you to, that, you know, he needs you to go check out. As you look at the building, you notice that it actually looks half burnt and it looks like something, something happened there. And as you're kind of looking through the windows, you can also see a man on the inside, but you can't quite make out like, what is he doing or what's going on? And that's what you see. Okay. Um, do we, would we have any sort of communication between the three of us? Like yes. the typical like earpiece thing? Yes, or anything correct. Like that? So, Part of shield, you know, you guys are going to get trackers that's actually placed on you, so uh, no one actually ever gets lost. You're going to have earpieces connected to you three at all times. Agent J. Fury can also, um, you know, talk to you as well if he needs to. Okay. Um, I would relay the information, like, hey, it looks like Nani's is burnt down. I believe we have movement inside the be inside the building. Not able to make it out quite yet. Um, I would then kind of boof into some smoke again and get even closer to the action, like just up there. Um, and then I would, again, trying to be as stealthy as I can, kind of hunker down here and wait for the boys to uh, arrive up here before I go any farther. Okay. Blazer, you're up. All right. Sounds like we're all clear down the alley. So I'm going to uh, let's see, head down. It's about four. Looks like I'm about. Yeah. So if I use both of them, basically, if I double my run, so basically, I'm going to run down the alley and uh, come around the corner and kind of catch up uh, with uh, Storm Shade on the ground. Okay. Um and as yeah, now that I'm closer, um can I can I take a do another vigilance check and take a look around? Yeah, go ahead. Ooh, good one. Sixteen. So you take you you can actually see inside and you basically see you still see a man just basically he's sitting alone alone at this point. He's sitting in, in a half melted chair. Um, you see a broom and a dustpan that's just like scorched all around him. It just looks like this place just went through a lot. And you also see he has a drink in his hand and he's just he's just drinking away right now. And with that, go ahead, Blackjack. With my compadres going down the alleyway, I'm going to go around the front. Since they've already relayed the message to me that somebody's sitting there, let's see if I can put this old rubber to use and uh, give us a roundabout way of seeing on the front side of Nani's. So I'm just going to move towards the end of the block. We got communicators, so they can still talk to me. I will end my turn there. All right. Go ahead. Uh, blazer, uh, should no, be wait. me. So, no, yeah, my bad. Yes. Storm shade, yeah, go ahead. Um, shade. the guy sitting in the chair, I'm assuming just right in the middle of the storm, the, the storm, the store. Yes, let me go ahead and actually, since you guys have spotted him, let me go ahead and reveal him. Uh, it seems that from the description, he's a guy that works there and not necessarily someone that blew up the whole place. Um, so I would like to, uh, I'm just going to teleport down to him inside the store, use my movement to teleport, uh, easily within range there down to him and I would like to like check on him like is he does he have any burns on him like 
does anything look out of the ordinary? Like maybe my skepticism, did this fire start where he's at or did it like come from somewhere else? Like, does he look hurt? Anything like that? So I will let you guys, um, you guys can kind of question if you want to wait for everyone else to get there or see what everyone else wants to do. Um, I'll let you guys decide that. Um, whether anybody's yeah. there or not, I want to check on his well being okay. first off. Like, you, is he yeah. hurt? Is he burnt? Does he need medical attention in any way? So you see him, he doesn't look hurt or any way. He just kind of looks looks distraught, like he's just he's stressed out right now. He's drinking. Um he's just kind of kind of moping around right now. Um but yeah, he does I, not appear to be harmed. Um if I ask him, like, what happened here? Like, does he respond or is he so in shock that he just doesn't say anything? Uh, he can respond. Okay. Yeah. I would, I would definitely ask him, like, what happened? Like, just kind of a general. Okay. So, I, you know, I, I would, this is, this is my greatest Italian. Uh, I would talk an Italian um, accent, but. You know, I'm not. I'm not even gonna try it. So, uh, for everyone out here, just just imagine everything I'm saying, but like an Italian accent. Sounds oh, like Mario. It's, it's a me, a George. It's, <laughs> oh my god! I know, yeah, this, everybody's been mad at me. Like when uh, what's the name? Took over the Mario movie. Everybody's, Chris Pratt. <laughs> yeah, just talk like your normal voice. Like this is an Italian accent. What are you talking about? Uh, but basically, he tells you like I would be more willing to tell you everything I need to. You go give me a drink. I, I'm I'm empty on my drink. You you go give me a drink. Um would I know where to find a drink? Yeah, so you see you see basically the inside. Oh yeah I didn't tell you so you this is the inside of a restaurant. You see the restaurant looks burned. Um you'll see the seating all around like a traditional restaurant. You see a bar, um a bunch of bottles behind the bar broken. Uh, but there's still a few that aren't broken. There's glass everywhere. Um, the liquor but, didn't catch on fire? Some of it did. Not some all did. of it did. Okay. Yeah, you got uh, the, high, the high proof stuff definitely caught fire. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a good old country boy. I'm okay with the whiskey here and there. Uh, so, yeah, I'd go try to find a bottle that wasn't broken and <laughs> crack it open and give it to him. He he thanks you for that. Um Let's can you, can you make a logic check real quick? Yes, I would love to. Um, let me make sure because I think I have. Or I mean, anybody if if you want anybody can also do a logic check as well if they if. Oh, that's just attacks. Okay, uh, I have a power that lets me use my ego, but it's only on attacks. So this is my logic is not great. So here we go. Let's see what it does. Five. So you ask him. What, what did you want to ask him again? Uh, I asked him what happened here and then got him a drink and gave him the drink and just kind of pulled up a chair next to him. He he thanks you for the drink, but he tells you that he doesn't want to talk to you right now. He would rather talk to someone else. Just leave him alone. Because I'm white. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it. I, I get it. Like, I just kind of like... <laughs> Tip my hat and cheers him with another bottle of whiskey that I found and sit and wait for the boys to show up. Just kind of keep my eyes around just in case anybody else is in the building I haven't seen yet. But for the most part, I'm just waiting for the other fellas. All right. Go ahead, Stormshade. I just went. Oh, oh God damn. You know, I, I know. I keep forgetting. These, these are all new names. We all have blue yeah. in our tokens and stuff, too. So <laughs> it's really hard to differentiate which one's which. All right. Go ahead, all Blazer. Right. Yeah. So uh, so I'm going to walk up towards um, uh, uh, Stormshade and this fella and uh, introduce myself, ask him what his name is, and like try and like. So I guess I kinda, I'm like aware that like he wasn't very open to, uh, to Storm, Stormshade's questioning. But it's like I ask him his name and like, like, hey, like, what, what in the world happened here? And but see if I can like persuade him to like, say a little, say at least say something about what happened. Okay, go ahead and do a logic check as well. 
And if you have any traits or anything that gives you an edge or anything, like be sure and check those out too. Yeah. Um, Looks like an 11. He also looks at you and he tells you, you are with this other guy. I, I do not trust him and I do not trust you. And he just kind of, he's starting to shut down more and more. He actually got, he, he's, he's almost about to tell you guys to get out of his shop and just leave him be. Anything else you want to do blazer? I'm Yeah, guessing so I we don't, don't. I don't see anything like explicit for it, but like, can I use like an ego check to try and like persuade him to like, hey, like, it's okay. Like, we're here to help. Yeah. Uh... Clearly, like something like disastrous has happened here. Like, we just want to make sure it's safe. And like, who did this? And like, are you in, are, are you, are you in danger? Like, we're just trying to help. Yeah, I will actually I'll give either since you guys are both in the room right now, who would rather do the ego check? Um, uh, I've got pretty good, especially non-combat ego. Uh, I just I have a plus two in ego, so if yours is better, have at it. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and do an ego check. An eighteen. And Nice. okay. Ooh, plus Oh. six. Is that a point? That was Okay, good. and it was a non-marvel. Okay. Um. He tells you that the Magia is trying to get all the stores in the local area to sell. He doesn't know why, but every time they approach him, he tells them that the, the price just isn't fair. And this store has been in his family for generations. He also tells you that his name is Luca Quinn, but everyone knows him as Nani. His wife and kids, he has a wife and kids. He's He's real close to retirement. He just wants to see his boys just grow up to be, you know, A real man, as he says. He also tells you that they approached him many times and he just refused. He said, oh, Martha down the street, they approached her and she quickly gave in to the block. Uh, Nicolo, he's he's still there, but I, I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, he might give up pretty soon. He also tells you that he's a major figure in the in the area. And if he sells, he feels like this whole area is just going to be over with he just talks about the magia again and that's he just he mentions how the magia is just so bad for the area and Would that's we it know if that's like a name of someone or is that like the Italian you can mob? you can ask yeah like what's what's this demagia So he tells you that the magia is a group of thugs basically they are this uh, just for context this this is this world's version of the mafia they they are no good people. The most notable families uh, in New York are the Manfreds, who is led by Silvermane. We got the Neferis, who is led by Count Neferi. We got the Hammerheads, who are led by Hammerhead. And we got the Libras, who are led by Isabel Libra. Although there are a lot of other ones, Marbury Street, which is where we are, has been a long-time territory of the Manfredis. So the so the Maya, uh, the Magia is this versions of the mafia. Okay, um, blackjack. You're up. I'm going to go ahead and continue down in front of Nicholas. I think that's uh, is that five. Let's see. Why is my little tape measure thing not working? That's five right there. That's five right there. Wow. Yes, sir. As I approach in front of Nicolas, I want to do a vigilance check and see if I can notice anything from the outside. Over the inner, over the communicator, I can hear everything they're talking about, so I don't feel the need to just jump in there. I'm going to look around Yeah. to see if I can Yeah, see anything. we definitely should have said, like, left the communicator, like, wide open so the whole team can hear everything that I'm saying inside. 
I imagine there's no radio silence because they're all yeah. out here investigating. Right. So I'm going to yeah. assume that everybody's yeah. open and I can just hear everything yeah. as it is. Nobody's being shady quite yet. It's fine. We're good. <laughs> so I'm going to do a vigilance check uh, just to see if there's anything I can see from the outside in front of Nicolos and then Luciano and Mar- Mateo. Just my general view. Do I see anything out there? 17. So you you look around and you notice that all the other shops in the area are kind of they almost look abandoned. Um, you heard over ne- over the radio that a lot of the street is kind of being taken over by the Manfredis, and you notice that in the center of all this is a courtyard, and you notice that the courtyard is just filled with a bunch of boxes, and that's not kind of normal for this area. Um, you also don't, you also notice like there's literally no one walking on this street right now. Um, and that is what you see so far. Okay. I'm going to end my turn there. Okay. Uh, Stormshade. Um, I guess we should ask like, who did this? Was it the Dimaggia that? torched your store like do, do you know that for sure did you are the did you see anybody do this uh would you rather have an ego check or a logic check i would rather do ego okay my ego's better it's not great but let's see uh fantastic 11 <laughs> rolling great already With the fantastic, he he opens up more. He he tells you to once again go grab a drink, and you know you being the chivalrous man you did, you grabbed him another drink. He he kind of looks down. He's kind of like taking his hands, like flicking it around the cup and everything. He says, "Look, I don't I don't want a lot of trouble, but this has to stop." He said, "The Magia, they, I I know who did it." It is Franklin and Juliana Romano, the brothers. Uh, they we actually went to school together. I I never thought that they would do this to me. I mean, geez, I mean our boys know each other. I just don't understand why they would do this. He he also starts to kind of look around nervously. He he just doesn't. He just seems very unsettled right now at this point. But he also revealed to you that. Franklin and Giuliano Romano, uh, they're brothers, and they he he knows they are the ones who did this. Um. Okay. Um. If I noticed him kind of looking around nervously, I would um, first off let Blazer, the better talker of the two of us, continue the conversation. And I would just start doing almost like a perimeter check, like checking rooms, like checking in the other alley on the other side down, like down here, pretty much Mm -hmm. doing the same thing Blackjack's doing, kind of checking the perimeter, making sure who, if somebody did this, whoever did this, they're not here anymore. Um, So yeah, I'm going to let Blazer continue this conversation and uh, relay to... Uh, blackjack that I'm going to check the other side of the building so he can continue to walk, like check out front and I'll check out back. Okay. So yeah, I'll just move kind of out the door and over to like this alleyway over here towards the courtyard that you talked about. Be- actually, before you move, okay. can I get a vigilance check? I would love to. Uh, 13. Okay. Um, as you were basically getting ready to rock out the back door, because you you're going out the back door, you actually run into um a couple shady looking characters. And as you're getting ready to walk out through the door, you see Nani kind of you know get real nervous and tense up real fast. And these two men uh, let me get these guys moved around. Oh, they look like mobsters. 
<laughs> I know. Dude, I, like, <laughs> I like Google the most stereotypical <laughs> bosses I could. They start twirling their mustaches. Listen here, see? This some is all hood now. <laughs> some 1920 cases. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they, they, they actually come in. You hear the door open, like, ding. Like, that somehow that still didn't burn up. Um, <laughs> they walk through the front and they come out and, and quickly. Uh, Luca's like, how could you do this to me? We were kids together. And the two brothers scoff at him and said, look, man, you knew that this might happen. We tried to warn you. It's not their fault you didn't take them seriously. And then, so those two are kind of going back and forth right now. Um, would you still want to walk out? Uh, I'm... Uh, no, if he's calling these the brothers that he just told us about, I'm staying between them and him. Because obviously they look like 1920s gangsters and everybody knows <laughs> they're bad guys. Listen here, see? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so I would not draw my sword, but hand on the hilt and kind of see where staying close between the two, the two parties and <clears throat> seeing where the conversation goes. And if anybody makes a move to do anything aggressive, do my best to stop it okay uh with that one it is now blackjack's turn right no wait 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 sorry yeah, that. no no yeah, uh, blazer. go ahead blazer yeah so um yeah oh shoot i forgot his name nani is uh are these the guys that that torch this place nani is like real nervous at this point but he's also still mad He's just like in such disbelief right now. And as you guys, as you guys, they're like arguing. So like you're asking him questions. He's yelling at them. They're yelling at him. And he's telling, he's telling them that they need to leave. You need to leave. Just like the, just like the, the little meme video. You he, need to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's very angry right now with them. Uh, what else do you want to do, Blazer? All right, so yeah, I just want to walk towards them um, and shape shift into my elemental form. So just go all blue, glowing energy, and uh, tell these guys that uh, maybe they need to get out of here. The two brothers are quickly like, "Whoa!" and they they pull out their pistols and they say, "You know what? I I'm tired of this." And so Nani then replies. So you're going to do this to me. You're going to kill me. You you already burned my building. Now you're going to kill me. You're going to deprive my children of their father. And he tell them, and then the, the two brothers say, look, we, we, we had to do it. We didn't have a choice. We tried to tell you that you need to leave. And he just didn't want to. And with that, we also see that one of the brothers, Franklin, Franklin's the older brother, by the way, and Giuliano is the youngest brother. They, you actually see a whistle. Let me get, he, you hear like the, like the, the, like that, like the little whistle. Um, and let me get these guys popped up right quick. He, he hit the whistle, you know, they did the call and you see three you know, big goons kind of walk up towards the building. And with that, we're going to do, uh, so they pulled the pistol out. So, you know, talking is over with everyone's ready to scrap. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to redo initiative again. Do we need to delete our other guy or just roll it? again? Oh. Uh, does it does it not over? Let me. I guess I'll. Oh, it probably just overrides it. You're right. Yeah, I think it overrides it. Yeah, I just override mine. Oh, sweet! I'll wow, look at that. Dang, we all got better. I got significantly better. Uh, all right, let me get the let me roll for these guys as well. Um. I'll cut out all the silence in a little bit. Uh, okay. 
so I'm gonna the brothers are gonna have separate turn, like they're gonna have separate roles. Uh, but I am going to have all the goons basically roll together. And then let me get these guys going. All right. So let me sort this out now. All right. We're good. So first up. Is our boy Stormshade? Um. Okay. So it's pretty obvious. It's it's down to fisticuffs, as nineteen twenties gangsters say. Um. So I would pull the Tempest Blade from my hip, and just right off the bat, I'm going to use a power called Whirling Frenzy. Uh. Make a melee check and compare it against the melee defense of every enemy. Um that's within reach. So just like whoever's right next to me, uh, if it's an excess, they take uh half damage. If it's fantastic, the uh, enemy takes full damage and suffers the weapon special effect. So I'm going to roll a melee attack, which is that one right there. Uh, 20 to hit. And you well, said everybody within, right? Uh, yeah, all the bad guys within like my reach, so five feet, like right next to me. So okay. it'd be the the two brothers here. And I guess their melee defense. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, that is enough to hit. Okay, it's not fantastic, so they both take half damage, so eighteen to both of them. Okay, so tell us how that happened. Um, just almost like one motion like i reach for my waist there doesn't seem to be anything like attached to my hip at all but in a puff of shadows and sparks a sword kind of appears like i'm pulling it from a sheath on my hip and just spin around and just slash them both uh the best i can okay uh, that's my action. I would then like to use my movement to kind of teleport behind them. Oh, but there's a wall right there. Mm. No, you know what I'm going to say right here. That's it. I'm just going to hit them and then end my turn in that spot. Kind of okay. stay in between the brothers and Nani. All right. Go ahead, Blazer. So, yeah, <clears throat> I'm uh, also going to move just kind of in between the, the guys and uh, Nani, uh, but I'm going to uh, use or basically create an elemental barrier uh, that then form a, a protective wall of, of my blue energy like project that out to make a wall uh between these two guys with their guns drawn uh and us uh mainly to, to especially to shield nani so like kind of focused around him it's kind of like since we're both in between the two the shield we're behind the shield but nani is like the center of the shielding okay go ahead and read elemental barriers effect and then don't forget to pay your oh. folks as well yeah. So, um, so the character forms a wall of their element within their line of sight and up ten spaces away. Uh, covers up to two spaces across per rank. Um, I don't. Let's see. Um, I guess how we're on the board. So if I draw the, uh, if I have the, let's see, do a line. I'm putting the barrier. Oops. But, I mean, you're so um, you're good. So basically, you're putting a barrier between protecting Nani, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it looks like it'll go through um, Stormshade. 
we'll, we'll just say he, he moved out the way. Like he saw, he reacted to it and kind of, you know, moved out. Okay. The way. Cause that's, that's part of this too is, um, our part of the power is, uh, Let's see, make an agility check and compare the results against the agility defense of any target in the affected spaces on success. Maybe that's more for if it's like intersects with, with enemies than good guys. Yeah, so yeah, the character makes an agility check and compares it the results to the agility defense in any target of affected spaces. On success, the character chooses which side of the barrier the target winds up on. On failure, the target chooses. The, on failure, the target chooses. Okay. On a fantastic success, the target suffers the elemental special effects too. Attacks against the barrier are against the character's ego defense. Any attack against it does ten points of damage or less are instantly absorbed, and the barrier continues. If the attack does more than ten points of damage, it destroys the barrier. Either way, the attack leaves those behind the barrier unharmed. So basically, so, yeah, you need to do an agility check and compare it to uh, basically the two brothers right here. Um, yeah, and also also ask, yeah. Um, even if it's the brothers Storm, and they're not next to the wall? So the way he's trying to separate it is going to be separating them from Nani, right? Yeah, but they're yeah. not directly next to it. Though, yeah, right? I don't have to necessarily go through them, but... It's me guess, that needs to make the check. Yeah. To see and, which and, side yeah. you'll be on. Yeah. Okay. And I'll, I'd I'll actually, choose to let him... Like I'll fail it on purpose so he wins. Well, well, no, he actually, can we we can no, we can communicate. So I'm just like, hey, Stormshade, like, do you want to be in front of or behind the 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 barrier? In front of. I want to right. be on the bad guy side. But then, yeah, no point in rolling because by the way, one yeah. of us is choosing, and we agree. So yeah. okay, yeah. So he's in front of the barrier. Um, Nani and I are are behind it. Okay, look at that. And then it's it's uh, duration is it's concentration, so it'll be there till I don't want it to be there. All right. Correct. And since we are rank three, you get to concentrate on three different powers and you can drop concentration whenever. Um, but you can also like have concentration knocked out of you. But when that comes around, we'll talk Oops. about it. Gotcha. So Blackjack, you're on the outside. You have you see these three guys basically walking up to the front door. Uh, so what are you doing? Here in the commotion inside. And hearing my counterparts jumping into action, I'm going to immediately take the dive from around my neck and activate my cards. I'm seeing these three guys approach out of the hall out of the alleyway. Uh, it's all going to happen instantaneous. So I throw out my deck. I throw out my die. The die lands on a six. And I draw the two of hearts, which are, which is essentially going to activate clone moves. So let me grab clone moves for the audience so they know what the move is. Uh, clone moves is the character picks another character within 10 spaces of their line of sight and duplicates all the powers that could be selected with special training origin. They can now use those powers if they are always theirs. If copied powers have focus, I mean, have cost, the character must pay uh, the highest of them or a minimum of five focus. Uh, when a character uses copied power, they must pay any normal cost as well. Sweet. So who's the closest teammate of mine within 10 spaces? Um, let's see. Yeah, it looks need, like I'm closer. Do you need line of sight? Yeah, you need line. Of, yeah, you need yeah. line of sight. And they're it on, looks they're like on the that's windows on the front, though. I see Is that the what door. that blue line means here. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice that. Are those that windows? Is, yeah, you're right. I didn't even notice that. Okay, and so he would be able there. to see in. And the building's half burned down, too. So, you know, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> So actually, the window's probably shattered, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. So let's see who I am copying. Clone moves, right? Yeah. And that looks like that is uh, Blazer. Yep. I wish I could so, pull out like, y'all's movesets. No, <laughs> I can just pick a power to use. Oh. Why can't I pull up your car like the way I can see mine? Uh, I have to put it inside of yours as well. So hang on one second.
Vergaar een soort appeal. Crazy. In my in my journal, I can only see me. I can see Luca. I can see Obsidian's, and then Blackjack and Omega. It's not last time I can see y'all, but I can't see y'all. Yeah, that's because uh, I don't. I didn't. I didn't have them in your journal. Um, oh, okay. Hang on, I got. I got to change that. Actually, uh, Blazer, you might be able to. You might be able to change it where you can show to all characters. Oh, okay. Um... Let me see. Show character name with roles. No, it's not that uh... one. Let's see, try to look at Blazer. Oh, I maybe mean, okay. I did. I turn on show all on the role play section. That's appearance. That's not powers or anything. Yeah, I don't see anything that I can set. I say you might be able to tell me your powers while we're in the meantime. I'll try to figure yeah, that so, out. Yeah, so um I've I've got most of the elemental power set. Um so Which there's elements? uh just oh. energy. Oh energy? Yep. Um I don't know if I'd be able to do that since special training I don't know if special yeah. training would count for energy attacks. I think special training just means like Almost like Black Widow, Hawkeye stuff. So like martial arts, melee weapons, uh, ranged weapons, that kind of stuff. Not necessarily like power powers. As far as that goes, I think well, I have shape shift, but I think you said you also have shape shift. No, I can check. I have to, but if it's one of your moves, I can use that. Shape shift is another one of mine. I'm already capable of it. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like I have of my non-elemental powers, I have shape shift, but you've already got that. Um, I have accuracy, but I have to draw for shape shift to be a thing. If it's already a base one of your powers, and I can clone moves. I should be good there. Uh, so I can't shape shift on demand. So, like, if yeah, uh, so for I example, can, I... like Shang Chi, when he's using, when he's fighting, like just I guess using martial arts, that's one thing. Yeah, so uh, it's a uh, power base powers sets include really okay. martial arts, melee weapons, ranged weapons, shield bearer, and tactics. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so it can't be shift. like superhuman abilities. Um, it has to be one of the. Oh, other. that makes sense. Yeah. So shapeshift's not one you could clone. So I don't really have anything to that's clonable. Yeah. Okay. And, and if you want to clone the copyable, I said the bad guys have stuff if you want. Yeah, you could take the bad guy. So what are the bad guys looking at? Uh, so let me grab these guys. Is anybody just a brawler at that point? Because I'm already a brawler, I do think. I got fast hands. Yeah, I got fast hands and brawling. So other than fast hand and brawling, because they also have that, they have... I do um, have slow motion dodge, too. They got vicious attack, suppressive fire... Uh, fast hands. You already said a uh, fast attacks. I mean, so you could like try to disarm them, take one of the guns, and then use like the the gun shooting stuff that they have. I don't have anything you can take either. All my stuff are superhuman abilities or come from my sword. And why don't we do this? Can I do an agility check to see if I can dive through that window, putting um, what's his name, Luca? to my back and I'll be facing the front door creating like a uh, funnel they can only come in through one yeah way. so you can you can always just uh, yeah you can run in front of them and then you can basically uh, it's not brace yourself but what is that called um, it's one of the reactions uh, like you, you can get in front of them basically you can get in front of uh, for like protecting yeah there's a, a dodge action that gives people trouble uh I mean, there's re you could start using your reactions like interpose and skulk and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, that's what I mean. Yeah, you can you can run in front of Luca if you wanted to. So then I think I'll do that since uh, I see the three guys come out of the of the alleyway, hearing the commotion going inside Nani's. I quickly use interpose to move myself in between Luca and the front door. 
If they want to get to you, they're going to have to go through me. Okay. Uh, so it looks like it is now Giuliano Romano's turn. So he's on the same side as Stormshade right now. Mm hmm So he's going to look at you, and he sees basically that elemental wall go up, and he's just like, you know, shocked that he just saw, you know, a giant wall just appear out of nowhere. Uh, so he is actually going to... So I have to make an agility check if I need to get past the wall, right? Um, can people go through it? Well, they can they can hit it, and if it does ten or less you, damage, you do, it gets absorbed. Right, and if you do ten or more, then it it breaks. It destroys it. the bear. Okay, I got gotcha. you. And that's the only way to get through it, or right. they go around it, right? Because how big was it? I think it was pretty um, big. Hang on. Uh, covers up to two spaces across per rank. So three, five spaces. Yes. So I've. Did you go just sideways or did you? Yeah, go I just. Like, yeah, I just did. went. I see the line yeah. right there. Yeah, I just went sideways just to. Five space. Okay. So I yeah, drew the basically line covered. And I wasn't sure. So I'll yeah, basically the covered the whole. They'll cover yeah, the whole room. Yeah, it's mainly. Yeah, mainly. Like there's room that we could get around it, but it, yeah, it's it's just to protect Nani really than more so than us. Okay, so Giuliano is actually going to do a move called Hit and Run. Uh, the character makes a close attack with an edge on an enemy. If the attack is success, the enemy takes regular damage, and the character can make an additional movement up to half of their run speed for free. On a fantastic success, the enemy takes double damage and suffers the weapon special effect. So uh, I am going to do a agility check. Um, against ego defense you're attacking uh, the wall correct or me i'm gonna attack you first me Sorry. okay um and that's against my melee defense that is not enough to hit me well that'd be against your uh hit and run the character makes a close attack on it oh wait close attack sorry i did the wrong one yeah. but it's still 13 um yeah close attack would be uh, melee defense, and I have an ability that lets me use my melee defense for ranged attacks too. So, okay, uh, but yeah, so I have a sixteen on defense, so not enough to hit me. Okay, um, I would like to use a reaction. Yeah, um, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna do repost. Um, if an enemy makes a close attack against me that fails, um, while I'm wielding the tempest blade, um, I get to make a close attack on the enemy who missed me. Uh, if the attack is a success, the enemy takes regular damage. On a fantastic, they take double damage and suffer the weapon special effect. So I'm going to attack him back. And that is a 20 to hit. Oh, yeah, that is enough for sure. And I also, I forget, I have signature attack, which gives me an edge when I make an attack with my, like, favorite weapon. Uh, yeah. But I don't need it for this one because I hit him anyway, so it's all good. Um, yeah, so, so tell he, us how that happened. Um, he basically so, tried to, he pulled out some brass knuckles and tried to punch you, by the way. Yeah, I just kind of popped to the side and just a quick stab through the gut for 31 damage. And with that stab, he actually, he goes straight down. Like he, he's just, he's on the ground now. Um, so this brother is, uh, He's down for the count right now. Um, okay. And with that, it's all three of the Magia goons outside. And so they're going to move as a group. Um, so all three of them basically pull up, you know, go through the front door. They, uh, I'm standing in front of the front door, so they oh, can't okay. get through me. So they're gonna go. They're gonna go through the door, and they're actually going to try to shoot at you uh, through basically the burned building. So uh, let me do them one at a time. I'll take this first guy. Okay, so it's just gonna be a regular agility check. My defense is thirteen. 
So nice. that guy misses. The second one basically going to do the same thing. 13. <laughs> so that one was enough to hit. And that one, let me... Did I separate? And that's going to be the second guy at the bottom, basically. I'll ping him. So that was the second guy. Um, so he hit you up for six damage. So basically, he saw that, you know, they just basically opened it up. They they had Tommy guns, and they're just shooting wildly into the into the the uh, into the restaurant. You got any reactions or anything? I'm looking because I thought. Let's see. I have a power called Point Blank Parry. It's not a part of my. It's, it's a what do you call it? <clears throat> not a part of my cards. It's just a natural ability. So it's instant. When an enemy within two spaces misses an attack against the character, are they oh. technically within two spaces? Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll we'll call it two spaces. They're, they're you're blocking the door, and they're right at the door. The first guy did miss you though, so this will be on the first guy. Okay, so on the first guy, makes range attack against the enemy who missed them. So. I'm going to use my iconic weapon, which is the glowing deck of cards. For those of you that are listening, these these cards are made out of a type of titanium. They are not just a regular deck of playing cards. So this is going to hurt. And then what I need to do an agility check since I'm making a range yeah, attack. Yeah, so point blank period, the character makes a range attack against the enemy who missed him. If the attack is success, the enemy takes regular damage. On a fantastic success, the enemy takes double damage. So yeah, you need to do uh, basically a ranged attack against the guy who shot at you. Cool. And that is enough to hit, and that did 15 damage. So tell us how that happened. And also, don't forget to pay your focus as well. Pay the focus part? Yeah. Drop that down there. So, as I see the Tommy guns, right? We're going traditional Italian out here. So, as I see the Tommy guns raised towards the door, I dive behind one of the tables, trying to clear out of sight. When I hear the bullets stop as they try to reload, I spring up, eyes glowing bright blue, angry in the face, and spear a random card out of my deck straight towards the first thug's head. Let's see. He said he didn't. I didn't do fantastic success, knocking him backwards, blackening with, his eye. Yeah, and with that, I mean, he hits the ground, hollering, and you just see him basically just pass out. And that was the first guy. Uh, the second guy still shot at you. He did the sec he did the six damage, and so now the third guy is going to shoot at you as well. Uh, so let me. I literally just closed it. That was crazy. Okay. He's going to take, he's, he's shooting as well. Like I said, they're all shooting into you, into the, the, into the building. Uh, that is a 10. Uh, sounds like a miss. And with that. Which would trigger my reaction again. <laughs> well, it, how many reactions? You only get one reaction per round unless you have. Combat reflexes. Combat reflexes or something else that gives you an I extra. I think I do with my trait. Let me see. Yeah, it's a trait. There's a trait called combat reflexes that gives you two reactions each uh, uh, round. Oh, nope. I didn't have that one this time. So no, I do not. Okay. Oh, it's on my other character. That's why. Gotcha. Okay. Um. So now it's Franklin's turn. Franklin's seeing his brother go down. He yells out, Giano, get up, get up. And he he's pissed, and so he's actually going to he's going to actually he's going to take a shot at you as well. Um, no, he's pissed, so he's just going to do he's going to do a move called vicious attack. Uh, the character makes a close uh, attack. If the attack is success, the enemy takes regular damage. On a fantastic success, the enemy takes double damage and suffers the weapon special. So he's he's just gonna try to straight up run after you, um, Stormshade, and he put the brass knuckles on and he's coming after you. So, uh, nope, eleven doesn't hit. 
And I am I do have combat reflexes. So I'm gonna use my second reaction to do the same thing I did to his brother and uh attack him with my sword as well. Okay. And do that. Oh, just a twelve. Oh, but I got hold on. I get an ad character. Hold on. Signature attack. The character is known for favoring a particular kind of weapon. They have an edge when making an attack with that weapon. Um, so my signature attack is with my sword. So I get an edge. I'm going to re-roll the one here. Let's see if I can do something better. Because I don't know if the 12 hits. 16 is much better. Yeah, that is enough to hit. Okay. Um, so yeah, same thing. Just as soon as I pop back up from the other brother, this guy takes at me spin around hit him one time too and it does uh 21 uh damage from my so uh, the tempest blade that actually is enough uh to also knock him down and he goes unconscious with with seeing that happen uh oh wait no we still got the magia goons out there uh yeah so he's out he's down as well um he is he's unconscious right now love it and with that it is now it is now your turn actually storm shape um can i see through the barrier is it see through or is it a solid like blue wall it's it's see through it's like blue tinted but like you can you can still see through it okay um i'm going to use my movement to teleport um towards the bad guys over here um that's not more than 30 no it's just five so we're good um right between the two of them and i'm gonna spin the focus and i'm going to do uh whirling frenzy again so i make a an attack on uh both of them if it hits they they each one will take half damage. If it's fantastic, they'll take full damage. I'm gonna do my focus here. And for teleport, I think it costs focus two. Let me double check. Teleport does not cost focus. Never mind. Um and then I'm gonna make a melee attack against them. Uh I get an edge, but I don't really need it, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, yeah, so 21 to hit the two of them. And that is enough to hit both of them. Okay. Uh, and then they both take half damage because it wasn't fantastic. So 18 damage apiece. And that is enough to knock them out. So tell us how that happened. Um. So after knocking both the brothers unconscious, I turn around. I see... Blackjack just taking bullets left and right. Um, so I just disappear into the shadows, show back up in the middle of the street with one swift cut across both of their their backs. Uh, take both of those fellas down as well. So they they both go down the remaining goons and they they their they just couldn't handle that. Um and with that the the energy shield or the energy barrier basically it went down and Nani walks over to uh basically the bodies of the two brothers. Let me get them back up. Um and they're 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 basically coming out of you know uh they got knocked out, they're basically coming out. And Nani says to them like why? Like I, I, I don't understand why did why did you do this? And they just tell him, like, look, I'm sorry. It it wasn't our choice. We were given a command, and we we do what we have to do. Um, is there anything that the heroes want to ask the brothers while they have them? Uh, I would get in the earpiece and say to Blazer, um, we need to find out who sent the brothers. And because Blazer's yep. better at talking, I want him to do it and not me. <laughs> Yeah, so I, wanna... I slowly make my way back in, but I say that to Blazer over the earpiece. Yeah, I want to convince, I want to persuade these guys to tell us who they work for. As they're doing that, can I do a, uh, is it vigilance check 
and search the bodies on my side to look for identification or stuff like that? Uh, yeah, you can. Nice. Go ahead. Oop, I don't know why I did it twice, but 16. Yeah, I see the first one. Is it's a Marvel, fantastic too. Nice. Yeah, so basically you search the bodies of the brothers while they're on the ground. And, you know, they don't have any ID on them or anything. Um, but as part of it, like, you do find, like, a signature ring uh, on their fingers, letting you know that they're part of the Manfredi family. And, you know... The the as as I almost called him Lonnie as Nani uh, already told you like this area is notorious to being run by them, and you see that these guys are are part of that family as well. Um, they're not high up in the organization, and now you can continue basically questioning them, and anybody can right. can pose the question to. Yeah, it's like yeah, who's like who sent you? Who you guys work for? Right here. So you try to question them and look, and they, and they are telling you like, look, it's strict policy. We don't tell our secrets to anyone. Um, but we really don't know why the Magia, why this family is even trying to take over the block. Um, we, we are just low on the totem pole. We, we don't know anything. Uh, we were just told if he didn't sell that we need to just burn his shop down and so we actually came, you know, early in the night or, you know, early in the morning and we burned it. And we tried to we tried our best to make sure that no one was actually inside the building um, because we still had the relationship when we were kids. But we had to do what we had to do. Um, and that's all we know so far. Any other questions? Uh but I mean, yeah. So like, if you don't know who's the top, but like, who sent you? Like, what's the next step up this ladder? Like, where do we? Like, somebody told you to come here and do this. Like, where do we find them? Look, I I, I really don't want to give away any of my secrets. Any uh, the family, they they'll kill me. They'll just kill me and my family. All I can tell you is that there's a lot of movement going on. At Pranos, it's a, it's a little distance away, but if you go looking around, you will definitely see it. And Nani quickly interrupts and says, "Actually, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of movement going around around that area. I don't really know what's going on there, but I could recommend starting there." And as he's talking, you guys kind of hear police sirens, like they're coming this way. Nani tells you, you might want to leave this area. The police don't take too well to strangers. Um, I'll do, I'll stay here and deal with these guys. Mm, that seems kind of strange. Oh, the police we, we heard just... gunshots. Sorry. They heard all the gunshots. They heard a lot oh, of commotion. Okay. No, I mean, it's yeah. strange that the guy that we just saved is immediately like shooing us away when the authorities are coming. Like, does that's that not a little, seem shady? It's a little strange that, that S.H.I.E.L.D. wanted us involved in this. Yeah. Um, I, because Nani has been, not to me, but he's been fairly open to Blazer, like, I just kind of nod, like, and say, like, okay, but I'm not going to, like, go away. I still want to be able to watch what happens. So I would like teleport to the roof of another building and kind of wait and see if the police actually arrest the thugs and the brothers, like see if they actually do or if they're like, let them go like they're in the mob's pocket as well. Um, This just seems shady to me. I don't want to just doesn't... leave and expect everything to be how we think it's going to go. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't seem like shield protocol to. Get in a, win a fight and then sneak out the back door. Yeah, could we check in with like HQ, like earpiece? Yeah. Be like, hey, they're telling us to leave. Um, the cops are pulling up. We hear them coming. Like, yeah, would we know like what's shield protocol for this? 
I mean, you I, guys can check in with Jay Fury. Like, yeah, that that's completely okay. fine. Yeah. yeah, Fury. Like, we so we we checked out this place you you sent us to. Um, places burned down. Seems like you know local mafia stuff. Police are on their way. There was a shootout. Bad guys are all down. Like, what what do you want us to do? So, uh, Jay Fury comes on the intercom and says, "Yo, did you meet the contact? Did you guys meet Nani?" What did he tell yes. you? And what happened? So, yeah, we, we, we met a guy named Nani who just seems like a local restaurant owner who's, whose place was burned down by some mafia folks trying to push him out or buy up his, his property. This seems seems like local local neighborhood thuggery, mafia uh, style. Fury, he says, you mentioned the Magia. Which family was it? Let's see. Brain. We've we've got we've got two. What are they? Romanos. Yeah, the brothers are Romanos, yeah. but the street is ran by the Manfredis. I think is what was told. there. There you go, Manfredi. He says, "Oh man, not the Manfredis." Um, okay. Is there anything, you know, out of the ordinary? Is there anything any other buildings around that kind of look strange? Uh, yeah. Savalio is, is kind of he's been running um, he's been running that gang for a while and he's an old man now um, and he's definitely he's cheated death actually a few times um, we have him on our most watch list uh, but more recently he's actually become almost robotic I mean basically the only thing that we can we the last time we, we saw him it was only his head that was mounted on top of a robotic body and it's basically that's the only thing that's really keeping him alive. And if he is involved in any of this, we need to we need to kind of put a stop to it. We just cannot have uh, this guy and his family just you know strolling around the neighborhood. Um, they mentioned Pranos. Is that like a warehouse? Do you have any intel on Pranos? Yeah. So Pranos, he he mentions that he knows it's not too far from Nani's, and it basically looks like like almost a giant mall, um, but it's kind of been abandoned for decades. And the fact that they mentioned it, I would assume something might be going on there. Go ahead and follow up on that lead. Do we leave these thugs to the local police? Just tie them up and leave them here? Yeah, I would tie them up, leave them. Um, The police definitely don't take kind to strangers in the neighborhood. Um, Hopefully Nani can kind of cover for you guys. Okay. Well, if Fury says it's good, then it's got to be good. Uh, we'll have questions for you later, Fury. There's no way that S.H.I.E.L.D. is scared of local law enforcement, but we'll get back to that. He tells you S.H.I.E.L.D. just isn't the S.H.I.E.L.D. that it was once before. Um, and more backstory, he tells you that, you know, after the events of Civil War, S.H.I.E.L.D. just kind of started to fall out of favor with you know, the rest of the world, and we're not as powerful as we once was. Don't want to be seen sticking our nose in where we're not really welcome, I think is what it is. We're still trying to get the rep back, is what it seems. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. So I would like to kind of like make sure everybody's secured, the bad guys, like bring them in off the street, all that kind of stuff, tie everybody up. But I would, you said the courtyard had a bunch of boxes all in it, like crates or like cardboard boxes? Like crates. I think we should check out these crates before we just go straight to Pranos. Yeah, let's let's go check out the courtyard. Pop a couple open and see if this is regular courtyard stuff or if it's robot parts or something. That seems crazy. Can I, before we head over there, or while we're heading over there, once uh, you guys get them all wrapped up, I want to take the two submachine guns off of two of the guys with extra magazines just to have on my person. You actually go check it, and when they unleashed all the ammo, like when they unleashed all the gunshots, they actually ran out of ammo. Uh, That's one of the reasons they were not able to 
And well, not only they got knocked out, but they weren't going to have any more shots left. Damn. Bunch of crashes hits the mafia too. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Bullets are expensive. <laughs> uh, and actually, Fury, I forgot, during the conversation, Fury tells you that, you know, when he mentioned, did you meet the contact? He actually tells you that, you know, Nani is actually, they kind of go back. They have kind of a little relationship. He tells him that, uh, despite the fact that he looks old, Nani has uh, been in contact with Jay Fury for a little time now. So there's that little thing. Um, so let's go ahead and let's roll again for initiative so we can get the turn order going. And I'm going to take these guys off the map. All right. So that looks like that is Storm. Uh, I keep almost saying Stormfront, which is, which is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, the chat GPT, like whenever I was coming up with backstory and stuff, actually said Storm Shadow, like G.I. Joe, like Storm Shadow. And yeah, I, I yeah just, that's, I can't be that, you know. That's what I kept thinking, too, like Storm Shadow. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's... I had to, but I did change <clears throat> like origin story stuff. We might get into it, we might not. But the original holder of the blade took the name Shadow Storm because Chat BG, GPT said Storm Shadow. And I was like, I can't use that. So I just swapped it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and uh, you are first, right? In the order, turn order. Yep. Oh, actually, no. Blackjack's first. Sorry. Blackjack. Yep. So, Blackjack, you're at the front of the door. Uh, which way are you heading out? Front or the back door? Let's see. I'm actually going to head directly out of the back door. <clears throat> and then, as I get out the back door... Yeah, I'm moving as five, so I push my right here. You can use your action to move five more unless you have something else you want to do with your action. Yeah, I'm going to actually take my additional and move another five. Yeah, you can get all the way to the crates there. In my turn with that one. Okay. Um, it is Blazer's turn. Be... No, Storm uh... Shadow. Storm Shade. Storm Shade. Storm, <laughs> storm front. <laughs> it's somebody. It's somebody's turn. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to do, like, head the same direction as Blackjack. Uh, I'm going to do it through teleportation instead of walking. Uh, but, you know, same difference. I'm going to pop in next to him. Next to, I'm assuming the crates that are on the map are, like, there for us to see and everything. Yeah. They're just kind of scattered, like, all throughout this area. Correct. Um, I would like to. Do they say anything on them, or are they just blank wooden crates? They just look like wooden crates right now. I I think I'm gonna pop a couple of them open if I can, just to see what's inside them. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, let's do a uh visualist check to see if you can uh see actually kind of make out what's inside. Yeah, yeah, you kind of understand what's in there. Okay, let's see vigilance. And if you pass this one, we'll do an ego check to see if you can even understand what's going on. Oh, it didn't send. There we go. Uh, 18. Fantastic 18 on the Vigilance. Fantastic. Look at that. Nice. I can't get it in a fight to where I get to electrocute people or anything, <laughs> but I can do it now. And then let's get an ego check right quick. You can either... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I guess you probably already sent it. Oh, that's fine. You passed it anyway. I was going to say, you can do it or someone else can do it. But basically... Okay, so you... You see these crates and you rip one open. Like, you're... You just rip it... Actually, how do you want to rip it open? Tell me how you want to rip it open. Um, Yeah, so... I'd walk over... Uh, by this point, I no longer have my sword in my hand. I have flashed it away into a, a portal. Um, I would just pull out just like a generic pocket knife that country people carry you know 
slide it into the the top of the crate and just start like prying it open and just pop the top off and kind of see before I go, you know, head first digging into it. I want to see like if we see anything on the top kind of little bit before I start digging all the way to the bottom. I don't want to get blown up by something. Okay, make one logic check right quick. Either you can do it or anyone can do it. It's kind of up to you. Um, You rip it open, you see a bunch of electronic parts, actually. Um, uh, you still it... don't... Sorry, go ahead. Okay. I was like, you still don't have an understanding of what's going on, Um, but you see just a bunch of computer parts. You just open up a bunch of them. Um, Is anybody necessarily tech savvy? Talking to the team? <laughs> No, not particularly. I'm all Mr. Guards. Yeah. Voodoo, um, chaos, magic, I got you. Electronics, it's not my forte. Yeah, lo- uh, electronics, not my forte either. So I'll just go ahead and roll. I have a minus three, but I'll I'll roll anyway. No big deal. Oh, oh, boy. I rolled a fantastic 18 and a 19. It's got to be good, right? It's got to yeah. be good. Yeah. yeah. God. No, it's oh. not good. Oh. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, you you just see all the electronic parts, but you have no idea what's going on. Yeah, I'm it. magic and mystic based, and as well. So yeah, technology's not my thing. Is there any sort of like? Yes, I don't know what the technology is, but do I see anything with my vigilance or ego that says like? A a company name like do, do I see Acme on the side nope, of anything? Nope, Nothing you just, you just no see words. just a bunch of different like like you rip open multiple things. You just see different type of electronic parts, but you you just have no idea. You it know, what fits they with are. the the leader is a robot thing that Fury just told us. So, all right, it is Blackjack's turn. All right. Um, it is Blazer's turn. Oh wait, Blazer. yeah, Blazer's turn. Oh yeah. my bad. All right. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna come out while so they're looking in boxes. Um, I'm gonna go see. I guess from here, if I can basically do a vigilance check and see if I can see anything out of the ordinary about we're on the back side of of pranos like is there anything that looks out of the ordinary it looks like there might be a hatch or something towards the back of the building yeah go ahead and make the check fourteen okay so you look around and you actually you actually see some guards who are basically watching over everything. Like they can't, they don't see you yet. This is a pretty big courtyard. Um, Let me get these guys showing. This is a pretty big courtyard and they can't see you, but you can see them. Gotcha. And I'm, and I meant to say, like, I also I've gone kind of back to my human. I've shifted back to my human form, um, okay. so I'm not a big bright glowing blue thing right now. Uh, so yeah, hey, basically, guys, like looks like we've got some company here in the courtyard. Okay, and they don't see they don't see any of you three yet. Um, you guys are two of you guys are kind of behind the crates and everything. Um. Blazer, you are you're still you're also hiding in the, close to some of the crates as well. Okay, blackjack, it's your turn. Let's see. <clears throat> so I see the guys that are out there, right? They don't see me, but I see them. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and. I'm going to crouch behind the boxes and go ahead and take out a deck and throw my die or drop my die right at my feet and see what power I can get before we engage. That'll be my action. Okay. The the dice dropped on a two. 
And then the card I pulled out was a seven of spades, which is resize object. Okay. And then uh, I, uh, you wait, like drop that. I was saying, yeah. Did, you got anything else? Yeah. Uh, I, I got resize. Do you need to? You got it, or you want me to read it? Let's see. Resize object. The character can make an object within reach grow or shrink. The uh, the character can resize the object as much as their own grow or shrink power would allow them to. Okay, what do you want to resize? I am not going to resize anything just yet. Okay. But I am going to move toward Blazer. Staying stealthily crouched. And in my turn next to him. Okay. Did you move him? Oh, yep. there you go. Okay. Um, all right. Go ahead. Um, Shadow Storm Shades. Man, I think you guys said you guys <laughs> yeah. said it, and now I can't not think about it. <laughs> Storm wow, Shades. Wow, how dare you <laughs> misidentify me like that? Uh, uh, okay. So we all notice the bad guys. I'm assuming they look mobster like, very Correct. similar to the guys we've already seen. Correct. And um, you guys can also see, you know, the guns on them. Some have pistols, some have the Tommy right. guns. Um, is there, does one of them look bigger than the other ones? Are they uh, all generic mobster guys? Yeah, they're all generic. That was just, okay. yeah. I'm just making sure so we can prioritize bigger, badder guys if we have to. Um, I would like to stealthily, just to get, again, bird's eye view, see if there's anybody on the roof type stuff. Can I teleport up to the top up here? Oops. Like up here. Yeah. Because we're not in combat yet, so I can do... I teleport much farther when we're not in combat, so I just wanted to make sure. Yep, we're not in combat yet. Yeah. I think I'd be able to make it even if we were in combat, but I just... Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I don't... I want to be sneaky because I have that trait. And I want to pop to the top of the roof here, probably behind this uh, AC unit type thing. Yeah. Um, first observation, is there anybody, anything on the roof of Granos? Not Maybe. on the roof. Okay. Um, then I would turn my attention to the people down below. Um, you know, we already see them. They're standing there. Are they doing anything in particular beyond like just kind of standing guard, hanging out in the courtyard? Yeah. Or are no, they, they moving boxes and stuff? There, some are moving boxes. Some are, you know, just keeping watch. Some are just uh, talking. Sure. Smoke um, but, breaks. Yeah, right. But some of them are actually working and moving boxes on the inside yeah. to the inside of the building. Going in the regular door, not like a any sort of basement or anything like that. Blazer was trying to find earlier. No, they're just going through the currently they're just going through the front door of this uh okay. of this place or the back door right now. Okay. Um yeah, just kind of relay say all that information to the fellas like hey, roof is clear. Looks like they're just moving whatever's in these crates into into the shop the store mall, strip mall, mini mall, whatever it is. Um what's the move? I I asked the team like what do, what do we want to do before I just like jump down in the middle of these guys and start bashing mm -hmm. heads. Unless what do we Blazer, want, how do we want to handle? Unless Blazer has a better idea, can you teleport at will? Yeah. Wonderful. This table I got in front of me, I'm about to flip upside down and toss into the air, making it about. Well, let's go for an SUV size table and see how many I can crush. If I end up throwing like it a, too, if I end up throwing it too far, can you teleport out the way? Uh, yeah, I can. Yeah, Wonderful. we're good. I'm hard to hit. <laughs> Blazer, how's that plan sound? Sounds good. Um, said so just so we got it in our in our back pocket. I can also make a, a, a basically a box or a cage out of out of energy and yeah, uh, trap all these guys too. Can you trap like them that far? Yes. Amazing. Why don't we do this? I'm going to take this table, toss it up in the air, 
We'll make it the size of two SUVs. Can you make one that size, or do I need to shrink it? I let's how see. big can you go? Up to five, you, five, up to five spaces. That? Yeah, I can throw a table. This resize doesn't happen on touch. It, I mean, I can resize any object that I touch, but as far as like it me touching it the entire time. Uh, can not, you do it from range? Well, I'm talking about throwing. I mean, you can throw it, but I'm trying to see if you're strong enough to throw it. Yeah. Are you mighty table? or anything like that? I thought you said a car. My bad. No, no, no. no. So the the table, the table that's in front of me, I'm going to throw and resize it as it's released from. Oh, the gotcha. So it's okay. going to grow in midair. Gotcha. Okay, I understand that. And you know, when it grows in wood air, it's going to get you know heavier, so it'll drop right on them. Okay. All right. So how you got? So then, how are you guys executing this again? So you need you're throwing the table, right? And you're gonna resize it. Yeah, I'm gonna throw the table. So I, I guess I got got to do an agility check to see if it actually gets to them, or do I miss the throw? And then, um, the resize will happen upon my release. Okay. So do you want to? I guess <clears throat> for my turn, throw. Or should we? Because I only have this for one more turn. After that, I gotta draw a new card. That's the only reason I want to use it now. I roll yeah, two. You can. Did you try to roll? Uh, you can yeah, go ahead. I, yeah, yeah it'd be two, agility so. check. Agility check. Gotcha. So let's do this over here. I'll do an agility check. And I assume it's gonna be against. I mean, they're all the same guy. So uh, is this combat or non-combat? Just uh, this will be combat. That would be popping off the combat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I will do a. Combat agility check. Oop, where'd he go? Over here. Bam. Okay, and because that was a surprise, so uh, just like last round, like uh, last time we were, we had a last adventure, I don't do the surprise rounds. Um, I don't prefer the surprise round, but I will give you an edge since they don't see you coming. Sweet. Um, so go ahead and go for an edge. Uh, still the same number. Um, is that, that how is... that works? Oh, yeah, yeah I just I took it edge. There we yeah. Go. Okay, cool. yeah. And that is actually enough to hit. Wonderful. Okay, so how does the second part work? So I'll throw the table and I grab the table, flip it upside down, throw it into the air. Does since uh, Storm Shade is after me. Does Blaze Blazer even have time to throw up a force field blocking them in? I can react and move out of the way. And I'm on the roof, so it's not gonna hit me anyway. Like yeah. you yeah, don't gotta safe. worry about me. But yeah, since I don't take my action until next turn, can we Yeah, I'll give it to you. Can we... You wanna try to hit all of them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah basically yeah, I can I can in. box them in so okay. they're easier to hit. So we will we will make this one a little more we will call this a difficult challenge. Um Okay. But you can go ahead and let's see. We will call it a logic check to see if you can actually like keep them boxed in. Like it'll still be your same attack, but let's let's do a logic check. A logic, Log- check. logic over ego. Well, so, so this it- one, well, this is going to be for a blazer. So like he's boxing them in, right? Is that a power? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. elemental attack. Yeah, I'm so using yeah be- elemental yeah. prison. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and drop elemental prison so we see that. Yes. Okay. Um so the elemental prison, the character picks a point within their line of sight and traps any chosen targets within up to five spaces times their rank. In the prison compared with the element, uh when the element prison is formed, the character makes an ego check. And compares it to the results against the agility defense of targets inside the enclosed uh, spaces. On each success, the character traps the target within the prison's parameters. Uh, parameter. On a fantastic success, such imprisoned people suffer full damage of elemental special effect two. Attacks against the prison are against the character's ego defense. Any attack against the prison are absorbed and made against the character's elemental protection power. And the prison continues. If the attack does more damage than the character's elemental protection, power can sustain. It destroys the prison and no one inside it is harmed. Um, so yeah, sounds like you need to make uh, 
and like did it already go for you? Yes. So you need to make attack. an elite, right, and then compare it to the agility defense of the targets inside the enclosed space. Gotcha. And that's a fantastic twenty-two. Oh wow! Oh, wow. So yeah, uh, and then so since that was a fantastic, uh, where's it at? The success then prison people suffer full damage, and the element special effect too. Um, yes. So full damage is twenty-nine. So let's talk through that one. How did that hit them? So um, let's see for them to take damage so yeah basically made like a, a dome of energy that i slammed down on on top of them um and just hit them in the process and then on top of that uh and then since, it, since it's energy <laughs> well and since it's energy um and fantastic then they're also uh blinded by it yeah so that's your special effect correct yes um let me grab blinded right quick <laughs> dude these guys are about to be <laughs> I better get effed up. All they right. got blinded, smashed by energy, and now a giant table is coming. <laughs> yeah. as well. So blinded, any powers the character is concentrating on that require a line of sight, and immediately the character's speed is reduced by half of all modes of travel. They have trouble on all action checks that require a line of sight, and enemies have an edge on all action checks against this character. Uh, reason reasonably require sight to defend against or dodge. Oh, defend. I don't know why I said defend. Defend against or dodge. And then, so yeah, they went, <laughs> they basically were just completely blinded and everyone's like freaking out. And then they also got hurt from the prison itself. And now, uh, Blackjack, tell us your part. How did that happen? After watching the masterpiece of that energy prison, Lost upon these foes, I grab the table by the by the legs, flip it upside down, toss it into the air, and resize it to fit the shape of the dome, crushing the bad guys underneath its weight. And yeah, quickly. I mean, they didn't even they didn't even stand a chance. They might as well just you know <laughs> they, they 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 didn't make it out out. They they all died. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> uh, they didn't die, but they all, you know, got knocked out. Yeah, we're heroes around here. We don't, we don't kill. We don't trade lives. Uh, so uh, let me get these guys. Let's get these guys out of here. That happened before. That's... That is crazy. That's some good teamwork right there. Actually, that is a point of Parma for working together. You know, right. hey. Blazer and Blackjack. You guys get a, a point. Of, and actually, you know. Storm uh, Storm Shade, you go ahead and get him as well. You go ahead and because get you've gotten my name wrong every time. I'm gonna take that out. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be some kind of reward, right? <laughs> right. You just yeah. bullying me out here. Just bullying <laughs> me. That was beautiful. That was well. That was well executed. I will say. So now the back door to Piranos is completely. You know, it's no one's there anymore. You guys are free to walk in and see what's going on there. But that will be next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> Big giant fight at the end. One hit KO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was actually pretty good. Like that was like some cinematic stuff right there. Like that would have been beautiful to see that happen. Yeah, that's the prison thing is. That's crazy. That is that, interesting. <laughs> that is, and you and you got it. Uh, the Marvel success, so they got blinded too. Oh my gosh! I'm, yeah, I'm I'm so happy just to hit something. All right, <laughs> <laughs> uh, after your last character, <laughs> he who shall not be named. <laughs> I, I I had some lessons learned. There you go. Yeah, knowledge so, is a powerful thing. You know. Yeah. So we are we are currently in Little Italy. It's going down. Now it's time to find out what's actually going on uh, inside Pranos. So, hopefully everyone enjoyed this episode. Uh, we will be back, of course, with the next part of this adventure. But until then, 